Excited by the last elections? Relieved to see Democrats clean up? A year after the election of Donald Trump and the Republicans sweep, progressives won from Maine to Minnesota this fall. Women scored big, especially women of color. Virginians elected their first Latinas and their first openly transgender person to the House of Delegates. Election night was a cheery affair for people on the progressive flank of the ever-fractious Democratic Party. Cheery but for one terrifying moment. Just before Virginia's governor-elect Ralph Northam took the stage, a man took to the mic who is uniquely qualified to seize from the jaws of victory yet more dismal defeat for Democrats. Terry McAuliffe, the former Democratic governor and party consigliere, has spent his career shoving the Democratic Party to the right, creating exactly the sort of party profile that has turned off at least a generation of voters. At the Democratic Leadership Council, McAuliffe never saw a lobbyist whose dollars were too blood-soaked to accept. Chevron, Enron, Philip Morris, Monsanto, McAuliffe found them all a warm and cozy place. When Donna Brazil wrote in her book that the Democratic National Committee was run as a virtual slush fund for the most powerful polls, she was hardly breaking any news. The DNC's run that way for decades, and McAuliffe's been a central part of that. Whose party is it? Wall Street's or your streets? That's the question at the heart of my 2006 book, Blue Grit, and it's still just as relevant today. Who and what won in 2017 and why? You can credit moderate GOP light establishment candidates like favorite Northrop and believe that their win trickled support down to the bottom of the ticket. Or you can look at the base and see enthusiasm and energy spill up. Here's a hint. As Brazil says, the DNC is not a bottom-up operation. Every year, the party depends on activists from social movements to fill in the gap. This year, even after 18 months of being badmouthed by Clinton crusaders, Bernie Sanders supporters and the groups they tend to be part of raised money, knocked doors, made calls, and did the work local party outfits might do if they had the funds or the encouragement, but they don't. The progressive flank helped elect not just Democrats, but outspoken progressives, candidates who defied the McAuliffe-Clinton wisdom and didn't shy away from humane positions on radical things like war and taxes and death penalties and monopoly capitalism. Frankly, Democrats should have cleaned up this season. For a year, the president's disapproval ratings have stayed well over the 60% mark. The off-season victories could signal more success in the midterms and 2020, but not if McAuliffe and his ilk are allowed to interpret the results. Luckily, on election night, the reporter I happened to be watching was young and real enough not to listen to McAuliffe's speech about Northrop as a moderate model. He kept on talking about exciting down-ticket victories. Long may that sort of reporting continue. You can write to me, Laura, L-A-U-R-A, at lauraflanders.com. And thanks.